with that. Now our very last speaker before we march is Mike Preisner. Yeah. Now Mike is an anti-war veteran who's organizing soldiers resistance to the war, producer of Empire Files, and the host of the Eyes Left podcast. Please welcome Mike Preisner. Yeah, Mike. Yeah. Right? 
Yeah. Hey, what's life like there? You go to work, try to save a little bit of money, uh, to have a future, those kind of things, the things that we all worry about, right? Can you fathom what it's like to be a Raytheon CEO? Can anyone imagine it? Can anyone imagine what it means, what it'd be like to be a shareholder of an oil company? How about a CNN anchor? Can we relate to that kind of life? The people that want us to go to war, we can't even fathom it. Can anyone fathom what it's like to be a billionaire? No. 20 houses? Have five yachts? None of us can imagine yet that. Yet these are the people that are leading the charge for war, that are funding the think tanks that turn out all the New York Times articles and talking heads of the media that tell us why we have to go. Fuck we up. have far, far more in common with the people they want to kill than the people that are telling us we have to go kill them. <laughs> who make war, and it's always the poor who die. On both sides. Now I want to talk right now directly to all the U.S. service members. I was one of you 15 years ago, and I was in the same situation. Now the people that are telling you to go to war, guess what? Those are the same people that are calling your phone asking for your student debt payment back. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Those are the same people calling, saying you owe some health care debt. Those are the same banks that are knocking on your door saying your house is going to get taken away if you don't pay your mortgage on time. Those are the people that are trying to send you to war right now. And not to mention these politicians, these silver spoon Ivy League elite politicians. They have already proven what they will do in this situation. We know from the Iraq war, my generation went through it. And what did they teach us that you need to know now? That number one, they will lie. They will lie about why we need to go to war, just like they're lying now, just like they lied then. They will lie to you. And guess what? When that war starts going bad for them, as it inevitably will, and a lot of us start dying, what are they going to do? They're going to keep lying and they're going to send more of you to die. And more of you to die. Because they don't want to take responsibility. But guess what? They're not getting their legs blown off and they don't have any kids on the battlefield, so they don't care. And then what's going to happen? When you come home, Wounded, injured, traumatized. What are they going to do? Are they going to help you? No! They're going to punish you. They're going to ridicule you. They're going to kick you to the curb. These politicians have shown they don't care if you hang yourself in your closet when you get back. They don't care if you go out into the woods and shoot yourself. They don't care if you end up on the streets right here in Skid Row. They okay. have proven they do not care about our lives and they have no right to dictate any control over our lives. But you have the right, you have the legal and moral right to say no to their orders and say no to their war. Now, I just wanted to say that as I wrap up, yesterday I put out a statement saying anyone in the U.S. military who thinks this is wrong and wants to refuse orders to take part in an Iran war to contact me. And over the past day, I've been talking to over 25 active duty service members who say they're going to refuse to speak. And that, is, that is just with my small statement. And so being here today, you are raising that message, reaching people that can build the kind of movement we have here inside the ranks of the military Woo. to try to stop this war from happening. Woo. And finally, I'll say, that yes, Trump needs to be removed. Yes, it's the right-wingers in the Pentagon in Washington that are doing this, but let me ask you this. We've been bombing Iraq for 30 years straight through Democrat, Republican, Democrat, Republican, Democrat, we've been in endless war through Democrat and Republican my entire life. This country's been at war for most of the people here. Your entire life, we've been occupying and bombing. Why is that? It's because imperialism is not a policy of a particular president. It is a system. It is a system that only cares about expanding profit. Not even just for the military industrial complex. We're just making money off this war right now. Not just for the oil companies whose stock prices just shot up, but for the big investment bankers who just need to invest in new places. That's it. That's the reason. It's a barbaric system. And the way you fight that system is by not just fighting a president, 
but by building a movement for a better world. Movement, a multiracial movement, a multi gender movement, a multi generational movement. If we all understand that what we have in common is our class, our working class situation in this country, that unites all of us. And if we come together on that basis, on what unites us, we are more powerful than anything the billionaires can buy. We can fight them. We 